Hello, fellow birders. My name is Dennis Kania. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at the two yellow legs and some similarly looking shorebirds. On the DuPage Birding Club Education Channel, we'll be talking about all things bird related. And as I mentioned, today we'll be taking a close look at the two yellow legs and similar looking waders of DuPage County. So here are the four birds that we intend to talk about today, the greater yellow legs, lesser yellow legs, stilt, sandpiper, and rough. And as I mentioned in my previous shorebird tutorial, uh, the best way to start is to try and calibrate for size when you're coming out to the mud flats for a visit. And one of the birds that we typically can use in that calibration of size are the yellow legs. They're quite conspicuous out there. They're one of the larger shorebirds that we have to look at. So it's a good base to start from but it just happens to be the topic that we're discussing today. There's only a couple other species really that might show up in DuPage County that would be larger than these birds, and those would be things like a godwit or a willet. Those are quite recognizable and not to be confused with the yellow legs, and they're not frequently seen in the county, so we're going to bypass all of that, and we'll use the yellow legs as the base for our calibration on size today. And as in the other tutorial, I wanna mention that the intention of this tutorial is to give any birder who goes out to the mudflats an opportunity to, to recognize shorebirds and feel somewhat confident in the identification that they walk away with. So it's not the end all for shorebird identification, but it will give you a good foundation for starting with things that are not going to change very much. So we're not gonna focus a lot on plumage. We're gonna focus more on structure, and bare parts that are not going to be changing on us. It just simplifies the matter for everyone and gives you again a, a solid base to start you know your your, your base for uh, shorebird identification. So here are graphs that once again come from our Fermi lab um, bird surveys and we've been collecting this data over the last 33 years. And for greater and lesser yellow legs you can see that the pattern in the springtime is very similar. We have these birds showing up at the beginning of April and they're with us in that migration towards the end of May and then they, they disappear. They're not gone very long. We're, we typically don't see much of them in, Jan, in June. Um, lesser yellow legs are starting to show up maybe at the tail end of June, which is quite remarkable. Uh, but we do have them in, starting in July and we do have them carrying through all the way through August, September, October, and even into November on some occasions. Stilt sandpiper has quite a different um, window of opportunity. And you can see in the springtime, we don't get a lot of records for this species. And that's because their migration pattern has them not really coming through DuPage County that much in the spring. Their return migration in the fall, they do come through our area. And so we do see that uh, the window of opportunity is, is very much similar to what we're seeing with the two yellow legs. I don't have a chart for rough, we don't have any records for rough in, uh, at Fermilab. The only one that I've actually seen in DuPage County did come from just outside the border of, of Fermilab. So that was unfortunate. And I'm sure there are other records as well for the county, um, maybe a handful of them, but it is a bird that we should be aware of that could potentially show up. And maybe we'll have more records for rough if people are keeping an eye out for them. So let's first take a look at these yellow legs. So here are both species. We have lesser yellow legs here and greater yellow legs here. And the first thing that I like to look at when I realize that I have a yellow legs in front of me is I look at the, uh, the bill size. You can see that this bill tapers down. It's, it's, it's a fairly thin bill to begin with, but it does taper down to the tip. You can notice also that if we make a measurement uh, from the base of the bill to the back of the head, and then from the base of the bill to the tip, those two distances should be pretty much equal. And in our example here, that, that does look to be the case. We come over here to the greater yellow legs and we once again measure from the base of the bill to the back of the head, and then from the base of the bill out to the tip. We'll see that that second measurement is going to be one and a half, if not two times the first measurement. So our bill is going to look substantially longer on a greater yellow legs. And in fact, they do, have a little a tendency to look like they're slightly upward turned. So you can watch for that as well. In comparing the legs, of course, both of these are yellow legs and you can see that the legs are quite yellow in both cases here. 
They might not always look quite this yellow because they could get dirty out on the mud flats. But what you will notice, and it's difficult in the comparison of these two photos, but we'll, we'll show you an example in a second. Uh, the legs of the greater yellow legs are going to be more substantial and the joints will look more robust than what you see in lesser yellow legs. Now these again are not, uh, these photos are not to scale, so it's, it's really hard to recognize that, but you'll see that in just a second here. So here we have the two birds in side by side in one photo. And you can see that greater yellow legs will look significantly larger than lesser yellow legs. We have that bill comparison that I talked about. You can see that this is certainly a longer bill. You can see that it's kind of up, upward turned. And when you compare again to the head, you see this, it's larger and these two measurements would be equal. Now, if we look at the legs, uh, here they are side by side. And here these look like little matchsticks compared to these legs. And you can see that that joint looks uh, very robust here as well. So in a side by side comparison, it's quite easy to tell. Um, you know, that the greater yellow legs is, is a greater yellow legs, it's certainly larger. But when they're all by themselves, that becomes a little more difficult. So we have to rely on some of those other structural characteristics. The next bird that I wanted to talk about and introduce is the stilt sandpiper. And so here we have one on the right, and you can see that um, for all practical purposes, it looks very similar to the yellow legs we just discussed. If we look at the leg color, we'll see that it has more of a greenish cast to it. It's not uh, as bright yellow as what we saw in the yellow legs. The bill is a long bill. It is uh, heavy at the base and does taper down quite a bit, and it does have a slight droop to it. When we look at this image here, we can see that comparison is quite dramatic when we compare a the bill of a uh, stilt sandpiper to that of lesser yellow legs. You can see it's quite longer. The other thing you'll notice right away is that stilt sandpiper is smaller than a lesser yellow legs. So you can keep that in mind. And we're going to give a handout one um, plumage feature here that you can you can tuck away and that is the when these birds come migrating through our area in the fall they're still going to retain this whitish supercilium and you can see that in both images here. So that's something that would help set it apart from, from the yellow legs. So you can watch for that. And here's our fourth species that we wanted to talk about. It's the ruff. And again, I, I have to mention that this is not a bird to be expected in the county, but they, but they can show up. So we should be aware and we maybe will end up with more records if people are really keeping an eye out for them. If you think back to what some of the other shorebirds looked like, they looked small headed and this ruff is going to look larger headed and, and thicker necked. And overall, it's just a more robust, heavy looking shorebird than any of the others that we've talked about. If we look at the bill, we can see that it's in that range of what a, a lesser yellow legs bill will look like. You know, it, it compares uh, to the size of the head as almost equal. So, very similar to what we have in lesser yellow legs. But you can see it's heavy at the base and it re remains heavy all the way out to the tip and there is a slight droop. It's just a very heavy bill compared to what we would see on a yellow legs. In this image, you can actually see the legs are quite orangish or maybe pinkish orange. And in this image here, it's kind of hard to pick up the color, but it's kind of, when I look at it, I, I think it looks slightly greenish. Certainly in either case, they're not, you're not getting that feel of bright, uh, yellow like you would with, the, with this yellow legs. The legs are also very robust looking and so in, at least in comparison to lesser yellow legs again these look like little matchsticks. So here you can see that comparison of head size this looking big and robust this looking smaller and you can certainly see just how much bigger this looks than overall than lesser yellow legs. One other feature to take into consideration or to watch for would be the fact that the feathers on the mantle and the tertials are very loosely fitting feathers. And so even with a light breeze, you'll see these feathers lifting up. And that's why I have this image here. They just kind of curl up and it's very dramatic sometimes with the tertials, you just really see them curl up. And so these are just loose fitting feathers uh, that, that have that characteristic. They do, they do lift up like that. And so it's a little different than what you'll see on some of the other shorebirds. So it's something to notice and to keep an eye out for. So I would keep all of these features in mind. Um, let's review them. The, the two yellow legs do differ in size. That's quite obvious, but that's best uh, relied upon when you see them side by side. 
But the length of the bill is very helpful with lesser yellow legs being much shorter. And we talked about how to make that comparison. The thickness of the legs, particularly at the joint, can be helpful with greater yellow legs being much more substantial. Stilt sandpiper has that heavier bill at the base, and it does have a definite droop as it tapers down. The leg color will be more greenish yellow, and you can watch for that supercilium. That, that is a handy uh, plumage characteristic that we can watch for. Uh, the ruff's bill is heavy all the way from the base out to the tip, and it does have a slight droop at that tip. The leg color is very variable, and it can be anything from bright orange to pale green. The mantle and tertial feathers do lift easily with a light wind. So thanks for taking the time to view this video. Hopefully we have given you some bird food for thought, and I hope you'll join us again in the future as we explore all things bird related.